Hello and welcome to this month's edition of A Closer Look. I'm your host, Ted Heller. Right now I am joined by Mrs. Sue Masty, one of the advisors, and Josephine Drew and Scott Clark, senior members of the Academic Decathlon team. Thank you all for joining the show today. Uh, Sue, my first question would be, um, what is the Academic Decathlon team? Well, the Academic Decathlon team is made up of ten events. Um, there's a super quiz, which varies from year to year. There's a social studies component. There's a math component. There's a science component. There's an English component. There's an art component. There's a um, language, and literature. language and literature. There's, there's. I'm losing count here. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, a speech, speech essay, and an essay in an interview. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, and then they compete. They take tests, and uh, they compete against other schools and ultimately other states. Okay, Josephine. Why are you intrigued by this? What makes you become a member? I like decathlon because of the learning that it fosters, the chance to further explore both interests that I wouldn't normally have time for and interests that I never realized were interesting. And the thing that keeps me going is the people that are there. It's really neat, to mm -hmm. the people on the team and the people that you meet when you go out of state. Scott, what about yourself? It's um, a similar answer to Josephine's. The people that you meet are all people with curious and inquisitive minds and they work very hard to learn as much as possible and, and they love they have a love for that learning and and, to sh and you get to share that with them and you get to be a part of that too and it's like going to school over again but it's on your own time and your own terms and you learn as much or as little as you want and then you get to use it for competition and stuff so that's what okay. you enjoy about it. Are there tryouts for the academic decathlon team? Uh, to some extent, yes. Um, we, we take the students through an interview process to assess their level of interest and their level of commitment. Um, during the fall, we have scrimmages with local teams, and in those scrimmages, the students take tests. Do, and all, do all high schools have a Not team? all high schools. Okay. No, there's about okay. eight high schools in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. um, there's 40 high schools in the state of Pennsylvania. And um, as a result of the scrimmages in the fall, then we usually try and determine our team and we narrow it down. We'll take in the fall as many kids are, that are basically interested uh, to those scrimmages and then determine our team on the basis of the results from the scrimmages. How many are on the team? There are nine competing members on the team. Um, we've had a flex of another two or three members in and out that some students competed at the regional level and um, then we had a different group of students competing at the state level. But there are three categories. There are, is the honors category which is made up of students with a 7.5 average or higher. There's the scholastic category which um, is made up of 3.0s to 3.7s. And then there's the varsity category which is under a 3.0. And then there's three students in each one of those categories. This is all high school students? It's just high school, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. We find, however, that 11th and 12th graders tend to do a little bit better on these because mm -hmm. they've had the coursework, for instance, the math. Um, but so anyways, Josephine will, will just compete against other students who have 4.0s. Scott, on the other hand, will compete against students that are in the 3.0 to the 3.7 category. Okay. The real challenge is finding students who are willing to um, study the materials and learn the materials and that have less than a 3.0 average. Okay. And it could be anywhere mm -hmm. in that range, how do you so it's interesting. How do you prepare for that, Josephine? We study a lot. On your own, or do you have other teachers help you along, or is We've it studying on your own? We study on our own a lot, but we have teachers such as Mrs. Kinsey help us with speech. Our coaches do a lot with interview. Essay just kind of gets in there somewhere. And we have team meetings to help us study certain things and to kind of maintain cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. Scott, how do you prepare? Um, it's exactly, it's a team effort. You try and know, you know, every student has a certain proclivity for a certain subject and you have to enforce that on, on your team. And you have to work as a team together to get everybody to learn and to be up to speed about every subject. Um, you know, for instance, I, I was always good with the super quiz and always good with the social studies, and so I had to, you know, help a lot of people who wasn't. Uh, you the you best mentioned at that. super quiz, and you've mentioned uh, that. Yeah. What is the super quiz? Super quiz is um, the theme of the entire 
academic decathlon for that year. This year it was global, the global economy and globalization. Um, and it, it tries to tie in a lot of what you learned in the other subjects. But um, it's, it's the focus of the competition and it's, uh, it's the event that has the most work, I think. So they gear all their questions? towards that area? Sort of. It's hard to find the connections sometimes like because you have subjects like art and music and so the connections that you make to the super quiz are tenuous but they exist. Your they strength exist. is a super quiz? It always was for the past three years. Alright, what is a question on the super quiz? What, would, what kind of question would they ask? Oh, they ask questions about like famous economists like free, C. Fred Bergstein feels this way about FTAs, about free trade agreements and stuff like that. And that's your strength? Yeah, I, got, I did pretty good this time. Glad it's your strength. <laughs> <laughs> Josephine, what is your strength in this competition? I don't know. I, I like the art and music. Okay. I, I like everything. So do you also... I, this doesn't mean it was my strength, no. but I enjoyed it. Do you do the super quiz as well? Does everyone do the super quiz? Everybody has to. Oh, Everybody okay. does yeah. everything. Okay. Um, what's the atmosphere like when you do compete? I think the atmosphere, especially on... There's a stage portion where you're on stage, which is the super, where they ask the super quiz questions. That the atmosphere there is great. The kids in the audience are just screaming for their teams and yelling and cheering, and having a great time. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it, there's that you know rapid fire. You got to answer as quick as possible on stage. Um, but most of the time, you're taking written tests. What I mean, it's the atmosphere that you see every well, that's day. That's exciting. Yeah, it's the atmosphere <laughs> they see every day in the classroom when they're taking like okay. a, a, a test. Mm -hmm. But the atmosphere of the people together is great. They're is so the friendly. super quiz like Jeopardy, where they ask you a question, you got to respond that quickly? You have seven seconds to respond. They ask a question and they they post it up on an overhead or a computer screen so they had this year, and um, you you mark down your answer on a a sheet and then you put it into a computer, and it sort of automatically registers your score and mm -hmm. goes up like that. You don't have to say anything, but you just have to know the answer. It helps that all the questions are multiple choice. Yeah. Oh. And that we we're supplied with the information <coughs> beforehand in the form of a 76-page packet of assembled mm -hmm. articles. So you do have some way to prepare. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's not blind. Sometimes things can be a little bit of a shot in the dark. For instance, the social studies this year was anything and everything that happened in the 1980s. So our kids could do pretty well mm -hmm. on that, but certainly there's the opportunity for there to be questions there that they never saw. Yeah, yeah. What, is there local competition, and then how does the competition levels work? Okay, we have, um, we start out with the scrimmages in the fall, and it's, what is it, the Southeast Pennsylvania Academic Sports League is what it's called now. And then after we go from there, then we have to go to regionals, which is Montgomery County, and that's always in February. And the top three winners from Montgomery County then would go on to the states, which, which is always in March. Mm -hmm. The winner from states. So how did you do at regionals? First. Okay. Then you went to the states. And then the winner from states is the only representative of the state of Pennsylvania at nationals. And we won. So that's good. That was a good thing. That was very yes. good. That was a good thing. And then we went on to nationals. And then that's the end of it, okay. basically. There's about 37, 38 states that compete at nationals. And how well did you how well did you do? We ranked 15th in the country and third in the northeastern region of the United that's States. That's outstanding. Yeah. And we were very, very pleased with uh, the students' performance. Where was it located? Well. It was in Providence, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And when was it? When did you have it? April 22nd through the 26th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, as a, uh, a, a contestant, is it stressful? Do you find it stressful, Josephine? In a sense, when I feel unprepared, I feel stressed. But and I, when I feel like I haven't done enough for the team as a whole, I feel stressed. But once I'm taking the tests, it's just a matter of putting down what I know and what I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Let me clarify something. Josephine killed herself. She was under a lot of stress. She worked. She worked really hard <laughs> to get everything that she did, and it looked like she ran around pretty yeah. stressed. So. Lack of sleep tended uh -huh. to be a stress for these kids. Oh, okay. It's, it's, there's team competition. Is there individual competition as well? Yeah, everyone yeah. scores, um, gets an individual score on their test, and you can get medals and, you know, ranked in individual tests on, as an individual. The only score that counts, though, is the team score. So you try and, you try and make the team as a whole knowledgeable in every subject. If I'm knowledgeable in one subject, and I get the, like a thousand, a thousand points, and I get a gold medal. Doesn't count for anything unless the you know the whole team mm -hmm. was up higher with a score. 
but you could get a walk yeah. away for an individual. Individually, they, they acquire medals. Um, and then we also work for, in this case, we worked for the regional award, and of course, we, we work for national okay. ranking. I should also mention that Josephine won the Senator Pell um, Award for the Distinction of Art, and um, Sen this was the first time this award has ever been given, and Senator Pell was actually there. And he's a very, very distinguished mm -hmm. gentleman. It was a wonderful opportunity. So there's, there's individual little awards that can be won also, particularly okay. on, the national, on the national level. Josephine was also um, in what was called the Speech Showcase which meant that they chose her speech to get up in front of all of the students and give instead of just in front of the judges. Oh, okay. That's so she did outstandingly well. Congratulations. Thank you. Scott, do you find it stressful? I just take it in stride. I mean, I, I work as hard as needs to be worked, and, and I work hard to make sure that the team is uni unified and understands what's going on, but you, you can't. I, I couldn't go nuts, and I couldn't study like 50 hours a week. Like the California team said that they studied 50 hours a week for this thing. I, I mean, I couldn't do that to myself. But you go in, you take a test, and you, you put down the, the best that you know, and, and that's how it goes. How many are on, are on your team that you took to nationals? Nine. Nine. Nine were on the team that we took to uh, nationals. Mrs. Schleif is the other um, coach. And, mm -hmm. um, she attended, so in total, 11 of us went. Okay. Who are the other um, seven students? Can you recall their names? Uh -huh. <laughs> Try and get them no, some. actually, we just don't ever know. Jim Kramer, Kimberly Dash, Jason Harris, Helen Lewinsky, Chad Tressler, Jimmy Young, Jimmy Young Katie O'Driscoll. Okay. Did you get all seven? I got all seven. And then I counted them off. Okay. Um, what are the plans for the academic decathlon? Is it, do you do this every year? Oh, yes. Okay. So if you're <laughs> trying to recruit people, um, mm -hmm. what would you tell them to do if they're interested? Well, what will happen is that um, in a couple of weeks, I'll have an application available in my classroom, and I'll ask students to stop by. Um, Mrs. Schleif and I have already begun to identify certain students that we would like to ask. We have two returning juniors who will be seniors next year. That'll be Jason Harris and Kimberly Dash. So we're working from a base of two mm -hmm. and we hope to be working with about 20 students. Um, in the fall of this year I had some sophomores stop by to see me and at that time because we were working with so many juniors and seniors really couldn't deal with the sophomores. Now I want those people to come by and see me and um, pick up an application and then we'll be getting back with them and talking with them and telling them what to start studying okay. and reading over the summer and we get started. It's We just it's did nationals and now we're getting started okay. with recruiting the next team. Scott, what are your plans for the future next year? I am just sent the first tuition check in to George Mason University so I'll, I'll go there in Fairfax, Virginia. I declared my major as Administration of Justice but I'll probably change, you never know. Okay, Josephine? I'll be going to Princeton, New Jersey and majoring in some undecided area. Right now I'm looking at education, possibly okay. becoming a math or science okay. teacher. Okay. Now the question I was, I'm supposed to ask that everyone's talking about, you scored a 16, perfect 1600 on your SATs. I'm kind of going off the topic here. Uh -huh. You scored a 1600 as a, a sophomore? Freshman. A freshman. Then you took it again. You got another 1600. The question is... Why did you take it again? <laughs> there was a National Merit Scholarship that required that score, and it was not within the deadlines that they wanted the test okay. taken. So, so you, on both occasions when you took the test, you scored perfect scores? Perfect as in recentered perfect, which means I did miss one or two questions. So you did miss one yes, or two? Yes, I did miss one or two. Okay. Makes me feel a little uh. more comfortable here. <laughs> Congratulations on your accomplishments um, this year. Thank you. Um, and thank you for joining us on today's show. Up next, we'll visit the North Penn's future business leaders of America. Stay tuned. While walking in a toy store the day before today, I overheard a crayon box with many things to say. I don't like red, said yellow, and green said nor do I. And no one here likes orange, but no one knows just why. We are a box of crayons that doesn't get along. Said blue to all the others. Hmm, something here is wrong. 
Well, I bought that box of crayons and took it home with me and laid out all the colors so the crayons could all see. They watched me as I colored with red and blue and green and black and white and orange and every color in between. They watched as green became the grass and blue became the sky. The yellow sun was shining bright on white clouds drifting by. Colors changing as they touch, becoming something new. They watched me as I colored. They watched till I was through. And when I'd finally finished, I began to walk away. And as I did, the crayon box had something more to say. I do like red, said yellow, and green said so do I. And blue, you are terrific, so high up in the sky. We are a box of crayons, each one of us unique. But when we get together, the picture is complete. Tommy wants to design bridges when he grows up. Maybe he'll design one that you'll use. Now, would you like this free booklet of simple ways you can help improve his education? Call 1-800-96-PROMISE. Billy wants to work on airplanes when he grows up. Maybe one that you fly in. Now, would you like this free booklet of simple ways you can help improve his education? Call 1-800-96-PROMISE. Welcome back to A Closer Look. We're talking about recent academic accomplishments at North Penn High School. The FBLA captured seven awards at the FBLA state competition held in March. Five students from the competition advanced to the national level. Right now we are joined by faculty advisor Linda Westerlin and FBLA members Mickey Voida and Karen Anderson. Linda, first of all, explain for us what the FBLA is. FBLA actually stands for the Future Business Leaders of America, and we are a nationally chartered organization. Um, it has a local level here at North Penn High School. There is a regional level, um, state level, and then the national level. Um, we um, 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 are affiliated with all of, the, all of those. Do other high schools in this area, are they a part of the FBLA? Will they yes. have an organization? Yes. So how long has this been in operation? Oh, for years. Like, in eight, I mean, 1920-something, I think FBLA was actually founded. Okay. So what do you do in the FBLA? We try to, to foster a lot of different things in the students, such as leadership skills. Um, we stress a lot of business-type um, courses. We have, as, you know, for example, Karen is here representing Accounting 2 in the state. There's uh, competitive levels where they do go and compete in different events. We have workshops where we talk about starting their own businesses and th you know, things along those lines. Okay. Mickey, why would you join the FBLA? Well, it's a great organization. I mean, uh, it teaches you business skills, leadership skills, and most importantly, team skills, because you're going to need these uh, for the future. And if you don't join, I mean, you're missing out on a lot of fun as well. Okay. Karen, why did you join? I think it'll help me prepare for the future in the business world, and going to workshops and learning about leadership will definitely be a big help in the okay. future. How many people are involved in the FBLA? Right now we have about 100 members here at North Penn. Um, Pennsylvania is one of the largest states. We have a membership of over 10,000. 100 in North Penn High School? Yes. Can you do it at the middle school level at all, or you have to be a member at the high school? Right. We have to be a member at the high school now. There is a middle school level that we don't have at North Penn, but we are trying to get that enacted, if not for next year, possibly the year after. Okay. So how does someone become, how do you sign up to be in the FBLA? At the activities fair, we put out a table and a sheet, and the students that are interested can sign there, and then we send them notices through the um, school mail to try to get them involved. They simply, there is a dues involved. We pay, it's $10 for the students to join, six goes to nationals and four goes to the state, and that's the only method of money, of making money that mm -hmm. the national FBLA um, does. So the entire conferences and everything are funded by the student dues. And once they've paid their dues and start attending meetings, then they can be put on their roster. Okay. So what, what do you do as FBLA? Is there something in particular you do here at North Penn High School? Are you in charge of something? We run the school store. That's probably one of our major requirements because that's a daily you know, okay. occurrence. We're open every day. Now, Karen and Mickey, do you work at the school store at all? Yes, I work there almost all the time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Karen, do you? No, I'm not able to. 
Okay, so you have to put in a certain amount of hours? or Well, that's optional. Students that are interested in working in the store can. If mm -hmm. they're not interested, they don't have to. Okay. Um, if you're an officer or an FBLA, then I do you know, kind of encourage them to run in the store, I mean work in the store, because that is where the money comes from that then funds the activities that we do. So with all the monies you make at the school store, it, where do you put it into then? It goes into the FBLA account. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it does have to go to you know pay the operating expenses of the store to keep the store running. But then if there's conferences that we can attend, a lot of times we try to, if we don't get to pay the entire amount for the student, then they pay a much lesser amount to attend the different conferences. Mickey, what's your strength in the FBLA? What do you do in the FBLA? Um, well, uh, for this year, 1997-98, I was president and I had to like help run the meetings and help run the store so I'm kind of now you're a junior organized. and you're the yeah. president so yeah. you're are you coming back next year as a president no next year I'll be the treasurer okay as well as state treasurer at the state level not just at North Penn High School that's level. correct yes. okay okay and I, I just gotta keep organization up because th that's one of the main things that you need to do in, in a club like FBLA okay Karen what is your role in the FBLA well I was interested in the competitions for FBLA. I took the accounting two test at the regional and state level and now I'll be going to the nationals. Okay. Um, so Linda, this competition, where do they have local competitions and then you advance if you get to a certain score? H how do you move yes, on? Yes, exactly. That's one of the things. A lot of the students, as Mickey had mentioned, some will go into different areas and Karen was more interested in the competitions. Some students are more interested in working in the store. So they mm -hmm. can usually find their niche in the club. But with the competitions, I'm allowed to take three students from North Penn High School to the regional competition. So if I have more than three that are interested, then we have to do a runoff type uh, test if, if here. It, if it's regional, is it just Pennsylvania you're talking about? The regional is even smaller than Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, Pennsylvania actually has 28 regions. We have surrounding schools like Hatboro, Horsham, Cheltenham, Wissahickon. A lot of those schools are in our region and mm -hmm. we test at uh, Montgomery County Community College. The okay. students, we leave school around noon and they're there until about 5.30 or 6. So Mickey, you would be tested in this competition? Uh, yeah, this year I competed in business calculations. I came in second at regionals. Okay, w what is a question? on oh. the test like? What, what well, are we looking for? It depends. Like I took business calculations and it's some of them are pretty simple math problems like multiply this by this but some of them are compound interest and uh, just uh, you got to use some analysis and calculus in it. Okay um, and Karen what's your specialty again? Accounting too. Okay so you would also go on to the uh, regional level? You, yes. you went to the I regional started. level? Okay. Mm -hmm. Linda, what happens then once you go beyond regionals? After regionals, first, second, and third place from the region in each category can progress to states. And if they win first or second at states, then they can go to the nationals. Okay. So did anyone go on from regionals to state level? Yes. I took 18 students. We actually had 11 that were testing. Mm -hmm. um, and out of that group, I had six that actually qualified to go on to nationals. One was Mickey who, who won the state officer position. Then I have Karen who placed first in accounting two in the state. Great. I have three boys that did a business plan competition. Mm -hmm. It was a team event. They're now first in the state. And then I had another student that was second in the category of business procedures. Okay. So he qualifies to go to nationals also. Karen, what type of question would they ask you? at this level? Well there were some true false questions and then the multiple choice some simple about just names of accounts or calculating interests or payroll calculations and then there were some harder ones about um, like financial problems that a business might okay. have inventories. Are the competitions are when you have a competition do you go up against other schools or you go up against one at one on one or is it all the schools all at once? Well, I'll do this one. Yeah, um, uh, yeah all, the, all the people who are competing in it, they, uh, they all take the same test and it's usually 60 or 100 questions and you get an hour to do it. And then... Um, so is there any cheering on the sides or is it just... Nah, it's, it's quiet time. It's quiet, okay. <laughs> Okay. There were actually 89 students and competed in Karen's category. So okay. it wasn't, you know, just a small group. It was a pretty large <clears throat> group from across the entire state of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And we're going on from the uh, state level, then we're going to the national level. Yes, we are. And Karen, you're going to the national level? Yes. Okay, what do you, uh, where does this go? Where is the nationals held at? It's in Orlando, Florida. So nice place. We'll be there for a few <laughs> Nice place to have nationals. Yeah, let's go to Disney okay. World. <laughs> Disney World? Yeah. Okay. Um, Karen, what are your plans for the future? 
Um, I'm planning to go to Northeastern University next year, which is in Boston. It's a five-year co-op program where I'll be working full-time for, say, a semester, then going to classes full-time. And I plan on majoring in accounting. There's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, what do you uh, plan on doing next year? Well, next year, even though I'm just going to be treasurer of yeah. FBLA for local, I, I really wanted to get people involved because it's such a great club. Um, also, for the state level, uh, we have a project we have to do for, and we have to raise money. And we got to pick it out and then like try and raise probably fifty or sixty thousand dollars for it. Okay, so you have our plans for the future. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Well, that's it for this edition of A Closer Look. Thank you for joining us on today's program. I'd also like to thank Sue Masty, Scott Clark, and Josephine Drew from the Academic Decathlon team. For North Penn Television, I'm Ted Heller. We'll see you next time on A Closer Look. I hang out with a pretty trashy circle, the circle that helps this circle by recycling trash. We sort glass, plastic, separate cans, stack newspapers and magazines. Now, thanks to us, there are lots of products made from things we've already recycled. This cereal box wants your Sunday paper. These paper clips, in a more daring life, a 56 convertible. The circle works like this. It starts when we recycle trash at home and at work. It's completed when we buy products made from or packaged in recycled materials. How do you know the difference? Check the label for something called post-consumer recycled content. It looks like this. Make a mental note. Then buy the highest percentage of it you can find. You'll save a tree, you'll save energy, and in your own way, you'll help save the world. Complete the circle. Call 1-800-CALL-EDF for your free buy recycled shopping guide. 1-800-CALL-EDF. Music is a way of learning. Integrating all disciplines of education, creating a learning environment where children want to learn. Music is an important part of the classroom curriculum. Children experience history and world cultures as they listen to and perform music of other times and places. What music means to me is to get a better education. Making the sounds of the music and playing the notes. Education in the arts promotes higher level thinking skills by fostering creativity, imagination, self-discipline, teamwork, and self-esteem. Involvement in a music program leads to higher SAT scores. The music program at North Penn has provided me with the skills I need to either pursue a career in music or even a hobby. I know that the North Penn music program will have provided me with the skills that I need to do so. Music instills a sense of cultural identity and pride in our children. Music is the beat of education. If you're not recycling, you're throwing it all away. The odds your child will touch the stars are out of this world. The chance she'll grow up a famous architect somewhat more down to earth. But the chances are more than one in four your baby isn't fully protected against childhood diseases. Keep his baby shots on schedule. Ask your doctor at every visit. Give him the chance to be whatever he wants, even a rock star. Even if you're sure, ask again.